was originally born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I moved to New Jersey and lived there for eight years before moving to Tallahassee where I lived for 13. Then we moved to Orlando about two years ago. My wife is a paramedic at South Seminole and she got a better job here and I'm attending law school at Barry University. Uh, well, apparently I'm not the only uh, geek in the room. I'm willing to bet I am the nerdiest. <laughs> uh, I have three main passions, and first is I'm a huge history geek. Second is I do medieval combat reenactment called Dagger Gear. And the third is I'm a comic book geek, and we're going to Comic-Con on August 5th. So really excited about that. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm a history geek. I did my undergraduate degree at Florida State University, where I majored in history. Uh, but that's just education. I have a huge, co well, I have a modest collection of <laughs> historical memorabilia and ephemera. My prized possession is a document signed by Napoleon Bonaparte. It's a land grant from the French Revolution where they seized land from nobility and gave it to those who financed the revolution in payment. Uh, so you might be wondering how I come across things like that. My father started working in the auction business probably when I was six. And then I've worked in two different auction houses myself over the years, uh, affiliated auctions and manor auctions. One day I came by the house and my dad takes me into the garage and he shows me this metal canister sits about this high, and so what do you think of it? I'm like, I think it's a houseister shell. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty neat. I was like, Mom's gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a regator, but uh, I have a few anecdotes. Uh, so I told I told him I would take this. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna make it an umbrella stand. Oh. <laughs> So it still sits in my house next to my World War I Swiss sawback bayonet. The interesting thing about the bayonet is it's actually a war crime to use them in combat. Now, you can't, soldiers can't use serrated edges against other soldiers. And this is the reason, because they, the Germans would take these sawback bayonets and eviscerate their, the British and leave them on the barbed wire and it would take them hours to die. And the point of this was to get their comrades to try to come save them, and then which they'd be mowed down by machine gun fire. It was a horrible thing to do, and after the war, if you were caught with one, you were executed. So enough with the morbid. Um, <laughs> time to move on to something a little more lighthearted, and that's uh, medieval combat reenactment. I'm part of a phone fighting game called Dagger Here. It's played across the nation. There's a group here that uh, at Red Bug Lake, which is I think a quarter mile that way, and we practice every week. So there's a little bit of a difference between combat reenactment and what's called LARPing, live action role play. And the difference is we don't have classes or levels or magic. You're as good as you physically can be, which means the Swing from somebody who's been fighting for three weeks is just as good as somebody who's been fighting for three years. I'm going to talk about a little bit how to play. We have uh, kill spots. One is the torso. Any shot on the torso is a one-hit kill, which is collarbone, shoulder, back, chest, groin, and butt. And the other way to kill your opponent is any combination of two limbs. So a shot to the arm and a leg arm and an arm or leg and a leg. If you take a hit to the leg, you'll just drop down to your knees and continue to fight like this. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a couple of regional events that occur in the area. I've been to ones in South Florida, Central Florida, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. The biggest one is called Ragnarok, and it's held in Pennsylvania, and it pulls about 1,500 people. Wow. It, it's a lot of fun. So August 5th is Comic-Con, 
and I have been preparing diligently for the past three months. I'm going in a full cosplay, which is going to entail a World War I German helmet, a, ga a gas mask from Vietnam era Russia, a Japanese military style cloak, coat, sorry, and patches from the sci-fi fantasy tabletop strategy game Warhammer 40k. <laughs> Just in case there was any doubts on how nerdy I am. <laughs> I know most people have even heard know what that is. <laughs> Some of the guests we're going to see are Ian McDermott, who played Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars, Jack Gleason, who plays King Joffrey in Game of Thrones, and the voice actors for Pinky and the Brain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your time. I look forward to getting to all know you better at Soapmasters.